What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we've got our first creature feature for season six. Now it was definitely suggested by someone, but in classic Chris fashion, I can't find the comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of you did suggest it, so let's jump in. The zebra shark is a medium-sized shark that lives in the Indo-West Pacific. So you're most likely to find the shark off the coasts of Africa, Indonesia, and Australia. Generally, the zebra shark inhabits shallower waters from 0 to 60 meters deep around coral reefs and sandflats. I say that it's a medium-sized shark, but there have been records of zebra sharks reaching 12 feet in length, which is a pretty decent size, I reckon. Although often half of that length is made up from their incredibly impressive caudal fin, which makes them very good swimmers. Now, I think it's time to set the record straight on its name. Some of you are going to be looking at the pictures and videos of the shark, seeing those spots and saying, well, that doesn't look anything like a zebra. It looks more like a leopard. And you wouldn't be the only one thinking this because the zebra shark is often referred to as the leopard shark because of those spots. But the reason that it's called a zebra shark is because that's what they look like in their juvenile form. When zebra sharks are born, they're born a sort of darkish brown color with yellowy whitish stripes, which when you look at it there does somewhat resemble a zebra a little bit more than its adult form. As the shark gets older, those zebra stripes slowly morph into dark spots contrasted against a light tan body. The stupid thing about all of this though is that the actual leopard shark, this one, looks more like a damn zebra. <laughs> all of this was very confusing for the early taxonomists who actually thought that juvenile zebra sharks were a different species to adult zebra sharks. But oh no, the confusion does not stop there. Back in 2019, there was a taxonomic review for zebra sharks and its genus species name was changed from Stegostoma fasciatum to Stegostoma tigrinum. And the Latin for tigrinum means tiger. So now we're throwing tiger sharks into the mix and it all starts going a little bit mad. I know, I know, it's all getting very confusing, but don't blame me, blame these old dudes. It's literally all their fault. For now though, all you guys have got to know is that these guys are called leopard sharks and these guys are called zebra sharks. But why do the juveniles look so different to the adults? Well, when sharks are young, they're under threat from loads of different predators. So some juvenile shark patterns help protect them from those predators. For example, you might get some shark species that are particularly camouflaged when they're young. But in zebra sharks, those banded stripes and their coloration is acting as mimicry. Mimicry is used throughout the animal kingdom and it helps younger individuals make it all the way to adulthood. You'll have probably seen mimicry in caterpillars before. For example, some caterpillars mimic twigs or sticks to make them less appealing to predators like birds. Although that would suck if that day the bird was deciding to build a nest. <laughs> But another type of mimicry you might have seen before in caterpillars is the mimicry where they make themselves look like they have eyes and it looks like they kind of could be a snake, which is definitely enough to deter a predator like a bird. And this mimicry is known as Batesian mimicry, where a harmless organism ends up looking like a dangerous one. And it's the exact type of mimicry that zebra sharks use. With those banded stripes and that specific coloration, scientists believe they evolve like this because it makes them look like venomous banded sea snakes. And if you add the stripes and the coloration to the way that they move through the water with that undulatory motion, they really really do look like banded sea snakes, which is enough to deter any hungry predator. Eventually, as they get older and larger, the need for that protection from predators isn't as great anymore. So those stripes slowly morph into spots. And speaking of those spots, zebra sharks can actually be identified by them. By using photo identification methods, scientists can accurately distinguish between different individuals based on those spot patterns. To do this, they tend to take a photograph of the left-hand side of the shark and the right-hand side of the shark, just behind the pectoral fins. For some reason in shark species that you are able to do photo identification on, the left-hand side seems to be the more commonly taken photograph. So when you're looking at databases for photo ID, you'll always find more left-hand side images than you will find right-hand side images. This means that if we're ever out doing photo ID stuff, it's really important that you take a picture of the left-hand side first and then the right-hand side if you can, because there's simply more of a database for those left-hand side images. I don't really know why this happened, but it did. Anyway, because these sharks can be photo ID'd, it makes it a really good non-invasive method for tracking their movements over time. For example, you can see if a particular individual shark remains in an area over the space of a few years or whether it moves a little bit further away. At the moment, scientists are relatively sure that these spot patterns don't change, at least over the space of around four years. Although they're probably going to have to do more long-term studies to confirm that these spots don't change as the sharks get older and older. Whale sharks are another species that you can do this photo identification analysis on, and it turns out that zebra sharks and whale sharks are actually fairly closely related. They're both clumped together in the group of sharks known as the carpet sharks. Zebra sharks have a pretty impressive set of gnashes on them. I mean, look at those. Their teeth are perfectly designed for chowing down on small fish species and crustaceans, which form up a pretty large part of their diet. These pearly whites are easily capable of crushing the hard shells of crabs and lobsters. Generally during the day, zebra sharks are pretty sluggish and you'll often find them chilling out underneath rocks and crevices having a rest. Using their relatively large spiracles, which you can see just behind the eyes, they're able to pump water across their gills while they're stationary to help them breathe. And that process is known as buccal pumping 
thing, and it's pretty common in shark species who tend to spend the majority of their time on the seafloor. So while they might be a little bit lazy during the day, these spotty boys are very active at night as they are nocturnal hunters. Using their specially designed barbels attached to their nostrils, they can detect prey species that might be hiding underneath rocks or underneath the sand. And when they find them, they use their mouths and buccal cavities to create a large amount of suction, engulfing that prey species whole and crushing them to smithereens with those gnarly teeth. It's a pretty grim end for crustaceans. Zebra sharks are also one of a few select shark species that have been documented performing virgin births. Back in December last year, two zebra shark pups were born in a Chicago aquarium via parthenogenesis. But the strange thing about this incident was that in that particular tank, there was a female shark and there was a male shark. To the bemusement of the aquarium staff, when they genetically tested those two zebra shark pups, they weren't related to the male shark in the tank at all. They were only genetically related to the female shark that was in the tank. This completely flipped our understanding of parthenogenesis because previously it was thought that it was only used as a last ditch attempt to produce offspring. And we presumed that if there was a male around, the females would always choose to produce sexually as opposed to asexually. But not in this case, how bizarre. Maybe the female in that case just didn't really fancy the male. Sadly, zebra sharks are classified as an endangered species on the IUCN red list across the majority of their range. I think the only place that they aren't classified as endangered is Australia, where they can be seen in relatively high numbers because of a ban on their capture. And it's even thought that in Indonesia and other parts of Southeast Asia, the zebra shark is locally extinct. But pretty much everywhere else, other than the countries that I've already mentioned, they are in real trouble from a whole host of different threats. It's the usual suspects again, unfortunately. Inshore fisheries is the big threat for these sharks, which are often found in fish markets across Asia. As well as this, coastal developments and prawn farms are damaging really important habitats for juvenile zebra shark, which of course leads to population declines. Although there is a little ray of hope for these shark species, and this is something that I've never really seen before for sharks. Scientists from aquariums all around the world have decided to work together to try and save this species. ReShark is an international project that releases juvenile zebra sharks that have been born in captivity in aquariums back out into the wild via marine protected areas. It's made up of 75 parts partners across 15 different countries featuring 44 different aquariums. And the plan is to release these juvenile zebra sharks into MPAs that are patrolled by rangers in the hope that they can survive to adulthood. So far, they've only released a couple of individual zebra sharks, but the project aims to release over 500 individuals in the next few years. Rewilding is something that's done for terrestrial species all the time, but it's never really been done for endangered shark species before. So if this works, we could be seeing something really special here. This shark rewilding project is super interesting, by the way guys. So if you wanted me to do a separate video here on Shark Bites all about it, where I discuss how and whether it might work, make sure you let me know in the comments. The zebra shark, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful shark species out there. So it would be an awful shame for us to lose it across most of its home range. And I really, really hope this shark rewilding project does work. So there we go, guys. That's your creature feature on zebra sharks. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments. Do you have any other cool zebra shark facts that I haven't mentioned today? Do you want me to do a video on that shark rewilding project? Have you ever seen a zebra shark? Let me know below. Also, please do stick around to the end screen of this video where you're gonna be able to choose between two other creature features we did right here on Shark Bites. One of them is about bull sharks, which is absolutely insane. And then the other one is about seven girl sharks where we feature an interview with a shark scientist who is directly working with that species. It's really cool. So if you wait about 10 seconds, you'll be able to click on either one of those videos. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. You really help out the channel every time you click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. And that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.